Inrush current is the initial surge of current that a transformer draws when it is first energized. This high current results from the sudden change in magnetic flux in the transformer's core, and its magnitude is proportional to the current in the primary winding. When a transformer is first powered up, its core starts with little to no magnetic flux. To establish the necessary magnetic environment for efficient operation, a large current is required to build up the initial flux. This startup current can be several times larger than the transformer's normal operating current, necessitating special measures to handle it. A simple analogy, imagine the transformer's core as a wide highway with multiple lanes meant for magnetic flux lines instead of vehicles. Before the transformer can effectively induce voltage in the secondary coil, these lanes must be filled with fl flux. When the transformer is first energized, it effectively fills its empty core with magnetic flux, much like a highway quickly receiving a rush of cars. This process of rapidly populating the core with magnetic lines results in what we call inrush current. The amount of inrush current depends on the excitation current needed to establish proper mutual induction between the primary and secondary coils. Moreover, how efficiently the core is constructed also matters a well-built core requires less inrush effort compared to one that is poorly assembled or damaged. Think of it like trying to push a car with a dead battery, significant extra effort is required just to set it in motion. Once the core is fully energized, a smaller excitation current continues to maintain the magnetic field, with any excess being seen as no load losses. Transformer inrush current is the surge of energy required to magnetize the core when the transformer is first energized. This initial burst of current is usually several times higher than the transformer's normal operating current and its magnitude depends on both the design of the core and any residual magnetism present. In the accompanying chart, you'll notice that the flux density B of the transformer follows a hysteresis loop during operation. As the sinusoidal input voltage swings from positive to negative, the magnetizing current adapts accordingly, establishing the necessary flux density in the core. Once power is disconnected, a certain amount of residual magnetic flux BR remains in the core, with its level determined by the magnetic properties of the core material. The chart illustrates two scenarios if the power is interrupted at the instant when the magnetizing current is at its peak as indicated by the red curve the core retains a significant amount of residual flux BR. Conversely, if the power is cut off when the magnetizing current is below its peak value as shown by the blue curve, the residual flux will be lower. It's also important to note that the magnetizing current can be either positive or negative, resulting in a corresponding positive or negative residual magnetism. Transformer size, the inrush current in a transformer is a brief surge typically lasting less than a second that is heavily influenced by the transformer's size and design. Generally, larger transformers draw a higher inrush current because they require substantially more energy to magnetize their core. This is analogous to filling a 5-gallon bucket versus an 8-ounce glass. The larger container needs more time and energy to fill, just as a larger transformer needs more excitation current. Reverse feeding transformers, when a transformer is reverse fed, its inrush current tends to be significantly higher. This is due to the fact that in a step-down transformer, the secondary windings are positioned closer to the core and therefore exhibit lower impedance. Under reverse feeding conditions, this lower impedance can result in the inrush current being doubled or even tripled compared to normal conditions. Inrush current calculations depend on several factors such as the saturation characteristics of the transformer core, the waveform of the supply voltage, and the specific transformer design. Calculating transformer inrush current is a complex process that involves several interrelated factors, saturation characteristics of the transformer core. The transformer core exhibits a nonlinear behavior governed by its BH magnetic curve. When the core is driven into magnetic saturation, its effective permeability drops, causing a dramatic increase in the current drawn. Therefore, understanding the hysteresis or saturation characteristics of the core is critical, as these details determine how far the core can be pushed before the reaction and thus the current spikes. Effects of inrush current, inrush is a normal occurrence when you first energize a transformer. However, in extreme cases, inrush can cause protection devices to trip, or even overload the power system or connected equipment. Tripping of protective devices, if the inrush current is excessively high, it may cause circuit breakers or the transformer's fuses to trip. 
These protective devices are designed to detect and respond to abnormal current levels to protect the system from damage. In cases of severe inrush current, false tripping of protective devices may occur, resulting in unnecessary power interruptions. A fuse that accommodates the transformer's initial inrush current should be selected. This is accomplished by selecting a fuse with a TCC time current characteristic curve which sits to the right of the transformer's inrush curve. Overcurrent protection devices must be coordinated to allow for transformer inrush current. If inrush current is not taken into account when sizing overcurrent protection for a transformer, nuisance tripping may result breakers or fuses operating as a result of a transformer's exciting current upon energization. The residual magnetism is dependent on where in the hysteresis loop power is removed. This residual magnetism and the point in the sine wave power is reapplied also drives the inrush current required by the transformer. The figure below illustrates a scenario that can lead to maximum inrush. The blue line represents the nominal flux density BM that occurs in the transformer. The red line illustrates nominal magnetizing current. It has a non-linear relationship to the sinusoidal input voltage. When power is disconnected at the instance shown, there is a residu residual magnetism indicted by BR+. If power is reconnected at the point in the cycle where magnetizing current would be in direct opposite polarity, the transformer coil becomes saturated in peak inrush current results. Waveform of the supply voltage, since transformers are usually fed a sinusoidal voltage, the exact moment of energization plays a pivotal role in determining the inrush current. If the transformer is energized at a point on the sine wave where the voltage is near zero, the mismatch with the residual flux in the core can lead to a significant surge. Essentially, the phase angle at the time of switching determines how quickly the core reaches saturation, thereby influencing the magnitude of the current spike. Specific transformer design, the design of the transformer including its winding configuration, insulation, core material, and even physical construction affects the magnetizing impedance. These design elements dictate the amount of exciting current needed to build the initial magnetic flux in the core. A transformer designed with features that help delay saturation or distribute the induced flux more evenly will typically exhibit a lower inrush current compared to one that saturates more abruptly. In practice, inrush current is typically estimated using transient analysis models or simulation software that integrate these factors into differential equations representing the magnetic and electrical dynamics. These tools help engineers predict the maximum inrush current, ensuring that the system is equipped with appropriate protective devices and coordination measures for safe operation. The peak inrush current that occurs during transformer energization typically dissipates within a few cycles. The next figure shows a typical dissipation curve. 